Hey, welcome back. I'm Evan Brand, Certified Functional Medicine Practitioner. Today we're talking to you, it might be a parasite. And this is something that's really timely for me. I'm going to link my lab results below and you can actually see the results of my stool test that I ran on myself. I try to run things on myself at least once every six months or once a year just to see how I'm actually functioning and what my health is because I'm treating so many people that I need to make sure that I'm healthy as well. And turns out I had two, not had, but have two current parasite infections. And we're gonna talk about that and how that could have happened and what that's actually doing to my body and then what I'm actually doing about it to fix it. So signs and symptoms. So this is weird because me personally, I haven't been too symptomatic. Now, I did lose quite a bit of weight. So you may have heard if you listen to my podcast, I was about 160, 165 pounds, pretty good size, pretty good amount of muscle on my body. And after moving to Texas, I began to lose weight and nothing else changed. So I had kind of a paleo style template to my diet. I was lifting weights, maybe lifting a little bit less weights just because I was busy with a new job. And so I began to lose weight slowly. And I eventually went from 160 pounds down to about 140 pounds over a year. You're talking 20 pounds in a year, unexplained weight loss. And so that was kind of the first clue that something wasn't right. Now, here's some of the other symptoms that may correlate with a parasite infection in your GI tract. So we have bloating. Now, this is going to be mostly after a meal. So this might not be that your stomach is distended all of the time. It could be when you eat that you notice as soon as you get in the shower, say you eat dinner and you go take a shower, you may notice, whoa, my stomach's puffed up. And that could be one symptom. Now, fatigue, this is another one that I actually did experience and I just attribute it to some adrenal issues that I was fixing. So look for my other videos on this channel about adrenal fatigue. I assume maybe that's all that was going on was adrenal stress, but this could be tied into the parasite because it's gonna be stealing your energy, your amino acids, and therefore not fueling up your brain and your body. Next is gonna be IBS. So I'm gonna put a red line under this one because this was something that really started my health journey about seven years ago when I was diagnosed IBS, which is basically just a disease that means we have no clue what's going on, but you're having constipation or you're having diarrhea or other types of symptoms that don't make sense. And so if you do have IBS or you've been diagnosed IBS, it may be time to take a deeper look into your GI tract and see what's going on. So here's another one, ridges on nails. I have some vertical ridges, lines, that you can kind of see in the light across my nails. So take a look at your nails right now and see if you see those vertical ridges. If you do, that may be a sign that something's going on. And why that happens is because you're actually not going to be breaking down your proteins, you're not gonna be breaking down your fats, Therefore, your body is going to become nutritionally lacking. You're going to be missing out on some of these good nutrients that you need to make your hair, your skin, your nails. So depression, this is another one that I dealt with as well. Kind of started my health journey, tied in with the IBS. Sounds like I may have had a parasite this whole time. Who knows? And maybe the perfect storm of stress created the opportunistic time for this you know, protozoa to really take my body over. Who knows? So brain fog, this is another one. A lot of people talk about brain fog and what do they do? They go to the conventional doctor, maybe they get on Adderall or some other type of methamphetamine and stimulant, or they depend on their coffee to boost them up. But in reality, there's a parasite underneath the, uh, underneath the GI tract causing the issue. So what happens? So how does this actually, how does this manifest and what else happens when you do have a parasite? So adrenal stress, this is a big one for me. So I always start every single person out investigating body system one, the adrenal system, because that's going to impact your gut. Now, we know that when you're secreting cortisol, your stress hormone, you're gonna be tearing away those tight junctions. So you're gonna be creating a condition that you've probably heard of, leaky gut. And so what that's gonna do, that increases the intestinal permeability, which can now allow toxins to get into your bloodstream and things like parasites are gonna have a little bit better opportunity, a little bit better odds of basically nesting in the GI tract. So adrenal stress could be a cause, but also could be something that is related to this because if you do have that parasite, you're gonna have this low level infection, this low grade inflammation that your body's constantly trying to fight. And it's almost like leaving your computer on with a bunch of tabs open. You're just gonna be constantly eating away at the energy of your battery and not charging it back up. And so I'm led to believe that it's a really tough decision to figure out, or a really tough concept. Was it the chicken or the egg? Was it the adrenal fatigue or the adrenal stress that led to the leaky gut, that led to the parasite? 
or was it the parasite that led to the increased stress, which led to the adrenal fatigue, which led to the leaky gut and more food allergies and things like that? We may never know, and it's going to depend on each person. So number two is immune health is going to be compromised as well. So I happen to have a really good immune system, luckily. I've been able to stay afloat with this, with these two parasites here. And I do make a regular uh, habit of taking medicinal mushrooms. I have a product called Immune Ultra that's on my store that I use personally for my immune health. And so that's something that will also get compromised. Just make you a little bit more susceptible to things. And then lastly, inability to detox. So now all of these different pathways are going to be occupied because your body's trying to fight this infection. And it's almost like if you are looking at the government, for example, and they're allocating all of their resources to spending money on war, but they're ignoring fixing the potholes in the town square, right? It's not that your body can't do it. It's just that your body is so focused and myopic in a way of looking at these other issues that it's ignoring immune health, it's ignoring detoxification, things like that. So that's why if you have something like a parasite for 10, 20, 30 years, you can really get into big trouble with chronic illness. So let's talk about number three, testing and treating. So conventional medical approach, if they even find it, this is one thing that we could do a whole video on. If you go to your conventional doctor with some of these symptoms up here, most of the time what they're gonna do is they're gonna do one stool sample on you and you're gonna mostly get a result that shows that you're free and clear. And I can't tell you how many lab tests I've looked at from conventional doctors that shows that there's nothing in the stool, they get a clean bill of health and they go on, but the symptoms remain. Now, when we look at their stool test with a functional medicine test where we're gonna have a three day stool sample, generally we're gonna find a parasite. And that's because we have to track the lifespan of these protozoa to actually find them. And so, you know, I'm going to write FM here. You got to get a functional medicine based stool test that's going to be a little bit more comprehensive and a little bit more sensitive that's going to be able to detect them. And then treatment options, once again, the conventional approach is going to be antibiotics. So there's many different types. There's about five or six different types that I could list off, but it's not worth really mentioning. These antibiotics are going to decimate the gut. And now I'm not a medical doctor, so if that's what the medical doctor is recommending for you and that's the only option that you're told, that's what you're going to think is the only option. And that's actually not true. So my, my favorite way is going to be the herbal approach. So there's tons of different natural antimicrobials, natural antiparasitics, natural antibacterials that can be highly effective at killing these parasites off and then at the right time, we're going to re-inoculate the gut with a good, a, a good probiotic and some good gut healing nutrients to make sure we don't end back up in this situation. So two that I really enjoy are going to be garlic, specifically extracts. I'm not just saying eating a garlic is going to be potent enough. And then we have oregano. So we're talking mostly extract forms here, highly potent compared to just sprinkling some oregano on your, on your tacos for the evening. Uh, could be good preventative medicine though. So these are two options here and I'm not going to go into specific dosage or anything like that because this is a complex situation. You do need to work with a functional medicine practitioner or someone that knows what they're doing and they've successfully treated people with this issue. If you'd like to schedule a free consult with me, I find one in three people we run these on show up with a parasite. So I'll have the link below to schedule that free consult with me. This is Evan. Once again, I'll talk to you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.